Hey guys, welcome to Jerry's Live. As always, I'm your host, Amy Gardner-Dean. And one platform was a little slow catching up, so it was like, we're good. Now we're here. So, all right then. Thank you, Will and Katie. Today is episode 137. It is colored pencil how-to. Today we're going to be doing reflections on glass by drawing some marbles in colored pencil and um, and using a set that we've not used for, I don't think we've used it yet, have we? Well, I think we use the Cezanne pencils for we everything. We so, but like... But it's been, yeah. That's like season, season one. Season one, yeah. 2017. So, uh, yes, so we're switching it up this year. We're going to be using the Soho Professional colored pencils. Um, if you are interested in l taking a look at any of the supplies that we're going to be using in our demo today, you're going to go to the jerrysartorama.com website. In that search box that's kind of at that top middle of the page, you're going to type in JL137. That, folks, is a keyword, and that will pull up that page full of all the items that we're using today. So let's go over them very quickly because um, I've already got some of this done, just a portion, and we're going to be doing the marble right next to an existing marble because I thought that would be an easier way to kind of see how you can perceive something. It doesn't have to look exactly like the photo, but get the gist across of the shininess of glass. So, um, helpful episodes to watch in advance of this show. I actually had listed them on the document because I've been noticing that some people go in and look at the document before the show. So, other color pencil episodes that we have that you may want to go back after this and check out. JL26, JL93, JL104 and JL117. I'm not saying go do it now. I'm saying catch them at a later time. So uh, for both YouTube and Facebook, when you have the description on your screen of what the show has, if you scroll down and look at the entire description, it gives a link of two documents, okay? One is all the shows in chronological order from the beginning of time, 2017, of Jerry's Live to currently now and each week I update them. Then there's also a document that has them in the order of the either techniques or the medium that we're using or guests, interesting things that we've had on all sorts of different topics. So that makes it a little easier to, um, unless you're into binge watching, and I wouldn't recommend binge watching me, that probably gets a little scary, but that's a way to be able to pick and choose episodes that relate to you. And if colored pencil is your thing, that's a way to watch the episodes that pertain to you. So, um, before we have used the Cezanne pencils, still a great set. It's a set of 72. It is just not a top quality professional set. As we know, we talk about it's, it's what, 25 bucks, which is a great way to get into colored pencil. If you're not sure what you're wanting to do, if you're going to do some mixed media with it, um, if it's something that you enjoy, you know, a professional set of colored pencils starts becoming a big investment. So it's a way of really knowing for sure what you're in for. But if you've seen any of our shows that we've done here, you know that this set still gives really good results. So, and it's very impressive for the price tag that it has. So Soho Color, the Urban Artist Professional Color Pencils, this is what we're going to use today. It is a set of 72. Highly pigmented, superior light fastness. These, both these brands of pencils are wax based. What that means is the base is what is ground together with the pigment to make the lead. There's wax and oil based pencils. One is not necessarily better than the other. They both have completely different handling capabilities, uh, erasability, etc. Um, the oil pencils you can put on some other surfaces besides just kind of your basic paper and stuff. Uh, these are, if you've ever used oil pencils, these are kind of like this really bizarre hybrid in between. They perform more like an oil pencil, but they're wax-based. They're just drier. So having a paper that's got good tooth to it really helps them stick nicely. Um, I've used them on sanded paper before. If you don't do like layers and layers and layers and layers, it works great. If you do a whole lot of layering, it can start becoming a little dusty because again, they're drier. They've got a lower wax content. Um, but they're, they're a really great brand of colored pencil and 
they're made by a very prestigious company for us. So, uh, so we're going to be using those. Uh, the other items that we're going to be showing, I like the Prismacolor Clear Blender Sticks. They're just clear wax based, so it helps with blending, especially if you've got a heavier textured paper uh, like the Canson uh, My Teens paper. It's great for blending layers of color. Uh, we're, I've got the Finesse Colored Pencil Blender Pens. Helps break down wax based pencils to blend them more smoothly. It really makes it more fluid. Sometimes it almost gives the effect of paint, so those are nice, and I've got those here. Whether we use them or not, I, I don't know, but it's always good to have stuff on hand that you might need rather than send Katie running to go get it. Like, sometimes it does happen. <laughs> uh, the Artist Leaning Bridge. This is a handy-dandy device that, that you don't think you need until you have one, and then you're like, why have I never had one? Just goes across that work, gives you a nice hand rest. Especially if you went and were a moron and put lotion on right before we started like I did because I was like, oh, my skin's so itchy and dry. That's going to look terrible on camera. Now I'm going to be dragging itchy, dry lotion hands across across the paper. So perfect. What? You don't, I didn't think about it. But then I remembered, okay, we've got the, the leading bridge. So this is just is fantastic, especially color pencils. A lot of layers so your hand can get tired. Just keeps that hand up off it. Keeps your drawing nice and clean. If you're a lefty like me, you know what that means to have a clean drawing without the hand smears. Uh, then we've got the Tombow Mono Eraser, um, kind of where it's a stick that's in a barrel for erasing smaller precision areas. The round one's on the list. I have a rectangular one here in the studio. I, they come and go different places. So it's the same thing, it's just a different shape. Uh, Marie's 4B Eraser works really great with wax-based colored pencils. Uh, erase their shield in case we get into an area that just requires a little tight area to erase and we don't want to accidentally knock out parts of our drawing. This is a handy thing with colored pencils. Uh, just masking tape. I've got the top part of the Creative Mark Studio drawing board set. I carry these things everywhere and have multiple ones around here and in my studio. Don't I, Katie? Because it's just, it's a nice durable board, but it's lightweight because it's the two sides um, with kind of the hard metal to protect it. Perfect for having flat drawings on it. Doesn't give a texture like some wood will where you're coloring along and then all of a sudden you see the ripples. Um, nice quality drawing board that's portable. It's a good size too. It doesn't weigh anything, but it's super sturdy. It's 18 by 24. Yeah. You're not really doing, it's rare that you're doing drawings that are bigger than that. You really need a drawing table, big right. drawing table or like an easel with a chair. giant board. Mm -hmm. It's perfect if you're in a chair. So um, then a, a paper we use a lot, and, and this is something as we're, mm -mm, as I move all the pencils around now, they're out of order. <laughs> I'm going to think about that the rest of the episode. Because mm -hmm. there's like three over there. I just saw it out of the corner of my eye. They're not in line. All right, uh, we usually use the Mytense paper. And and what, if you can cut to the drawing, Katie, what what I'm using instead today is, everybody says, uh, but Stonehenge is a big popular paper for colored pencil, which I agree. And this is Stonehenge, because I decided that's what a lot of people ask about, so we'll go ahead and do that. It does not have the tooth that, um, that the Mytense paper has, but what it gives you is this really nice kind of white surface. Now, in retrospect, in doing this, to really make those highlights shine in here with the white, you would almost really need to tint the paper kind of behind it, right? I mean, this looks three-dimensional. You can see the highlight, but because the rest of the paper is light, that kind of loses that effect. So what I urge people to do all the time, just the same as with painting, uh, on a ground when we talk about oil or or acrylic painting is probably if I was doing this for my own artwork I like this color paper or even there's they they make a blue and they make kind of a seafoam green would be really nice because you're gonna see the white whites let me get the white there's a white white here see how you're really gonna see a nice white white there so these highlights would show up really nicely. 
then you could use kind of a gray for those highlights, right? When you're going in and doing these darker tones, because this is already a mid-tone, you're not really having to work hard to get those deeper values in there. With Stonehenge, because it doesn't have a lot of tooth, you might not get the values as deep unless you use that marker pen, okay? So it's two different ways of approaching a substrate for colored pencil, but because a lot of people are big into Stonehenge, I thought that it's only fair that we try something new because that's what we're supposed to be about, right, Katie? Always saying, try new things. You'll expand your artistic horizons, so. All right, so uh, as, as per the usual, this is a, an image that was taken off Pixabay. Um, it's this really nice five really kind of nice little marbles here with different real pretty colors. There were other multiple ones I found that weren't bad either, but I thought this kind of had the nicest um, mid-tone thing. All I'm doing with this so that it's easy to, to do this for you guys is I'm just folding it up so it's easier for you guys to see it on the surface while you're seeing me draw next to it because unfortunately appears this crazy thing that's this me blocking things over here so so it's a it's a way to kind of fit that in so you can actually see the marbles that we're working with okay so the one here has had some time going on it and, and we discussed maybe doing it from you know the start kind of a little bit here and then a little color and then kind of coming in and layering on multiple images but i thought it might be better to have one that's pretty much more high value ready to go other than uh kind of that dark shadow and go ahead and start working on how i would fill in this next marble here okay so um so let's get going we're going to work with those soho urban artist colored pencils ladies if we get uh, questions just go ahead and fire them on i'm going to move this up so it's a little easier for me to See that if I need to see it, this angle's got a little bit of some shine to it. So um, I have a very light sketch that you guys probably can't see super well. I just took uh, probably that color. It's it's like a sky blue. It's 151. I'm not sure what, what color that is, but I thought that was the lightest so you could kind of see just enough of an outline where you can erase and make changes if need be, but not so much where either as you go over it, the color really stands out, and you, which you don't want to do with something like glass. So, um, so we're gonna go from there. So go ahead and just ask questions as you go. First thing I'm gonna do is find kind of the bottom base of that shadow so I can see where our marble is sitting. Um, let's see. Let me pull the colors that I had out for that. I just, there's there's some greens, there's a little bit of red because there are these cast shadows down in here with the color of kind of, there's a red stripe. You can't see that on my screen. I don't know if you can see it on you guys' screen, but there is a, a red that's almost like a brown in this marble from how the light is filtered on that. So I put that in the shadow as well on mine just because it's if light's pulling down through it that color is going to kind of stream through right so let's see what we got here so first i'm going to take kind of this greenish gray and i'm going to kind of reinforce that edge and i've noticed with stonehenge there's two kind of techniques that'll work decently well with it. One is actually kind of lightly coloring and leaving color, but it feels like that you really, um, you know what, reading glasses would be helpful for this one. It's just at that right level if I lean. Um, I found that it seemed like doing kind of line work for the colors, deposited it a little bit better, and then kind of smoothing it in some With, with, with line work, I'm talking about when we've done our drawing episodes, how everybody's seen that I, I tend to draw in lines as opposed to kind of color smearing, right? Color smearing the shadows. 
That's a technical term. Mm -hmm. It's it's if you look on it at Wikipedia, I'm sure it probably harkens back to me, right? The Jerry's Live book of technical terms. Cindy, you would like to know if you free drew those circles or if you trace them. I do not trace. As much as I would like to, there's this little, little kind of evil art troll inside of me that's like, you can't do that. So, so I drew them. I'm, I, I'm not sure if that's disappointing her or if that's a good thing, but no, I'll just, I'll just keep working it and kind of getting a loose circle and then slowly tightening it up as it goes. And with this, I could tell that this was lopsided a little. So I changed it by moving a little bit of the shadow in different spots. So it gives the eye like kind of fools the eye into making you think it's more round than it really is. It's another technical term we're going to use for today. Optical delusion. <laughs> so. So, um, yes. Sherry is wondering if we'll talk about alternative things to blend with. She said she's heard of everything from water to baby oil to linseed to alcohol to thinner. Okay, we've got the thinner markers. We've talked in some of those other episodes about solvents and things like that. That's the solvents and things like that are going to be when you're working in um, an oil-based marker. Um, wax-based markers are going to be water resistant, right? Because it's wax. So that's really not a, a good thing to do. Baby oil is a non-drying oil that will get in your paper and will make, you, you want to try that on a scrap piece of whatever paper you have because these are more expensive paper substrates. This isn't just, you know, a random piece of paper in your sketchbook. These are, are cotton or cotton blend, um, you know, papers that, that have some cost to, to them um, in individual sheets, let alone, you know, as a pad. So you don't want to be just willy-nilly, as you've already done your drawing, ruining it by putting something on it that, you know, will leave spots. And because baby oil doesn't evaporate and dry, it's going to leave big, nasty grease spots on your artwork. <coughs> so always try things. Even if you've seen somebody use it, unless it's in person, video can stop so easily. I would be, I would be suspect without trying something for sure. And with what colored pencils you are using, see what's going to work with your pencil. Um, I can show you in a little while, we'll go along and we'll try these um, finesse ones and see if that can't deepen some of these color lines in here and make it kind of a little more glass-like and fluid, but that's not some, that's something you want to do kind of near the end of your drawing, right? Because this paper doesn't have a lot of tooth to keep building up layers. Once you put that solvent on, you might not be able to add more layers because I've not tried that, right? So, um, so I, I would recommend to play before you're at a point where we're, you're in the middle of something important and then it doesn't work. Now I'm taking that same shadow color and I'm going to bring it, you can see up in here how it's got that dark. That's what I did with this, but that's multi layers of, of, uh, some different colors. So right now I'm kind of just ghosting in where I see that shadow on my marble. And the shadow pretty much comes right to the edge of this. I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna leave a little bit of a line where this is a little harder and darker under it, even though it's really hard to valueize, differentiate those. I don't want to, this is where, where that artistic license can come in. It, you don't have to do it exactly the same way as what it looks like for it to read properly. Okay, I'm gonna come over here. The shadow comes up like that, right to this line. So I'm gonna kinda of find that. Now, on, on somewhere like this, you don't want your lines to be too strong. It's one thing if it's that cast shadow. You don't want that line to read as a line because this is supposed to be glass, right? So you don't wanna have anything that's really kind of makes the viewer think of something linear. You want it to be very, 
soft. It's where, where when you make your lines and you drag them, kind of come at different angles because they'll blend together enough where you won't be able to really see that. Becky Quick has just purchased the 72 set of the Soho Color Pencils, mm -hmm. and all she's gotten to do with them so far is swatch them out. But she Good was, for her, taking the time to swatch. Yeah, she was curious how you feel about these, what you do and what you do like about them. And um, Okay, so it was Becky, right? Yes, Becky Quick. Okay, Becky, I um, came from using Prismacolor in college to becoming a huge fan of the Faber-Castell oil pencils to then um, kind of seeing this as my kind of gateway back into the wax base. And this is kind of has that beauty of both worlds of, um, I feel like because it's wax, it's a little bit easier to blend the colors. Um, it performs better. I, I'm a blender pencil fanatic. Um, it's so much easier to, to use a blender pencil with it. You can actually use a some with the oil, but um, the biggest problem with wax-based pencils, as anybody who's used Prismacolor knows, is wax bloom, right? The more layers that you put on, it starts showing, the, even though the color is there from some angles and looks true, from other angles where the light catches it, it just looks like this shiny thing, right? It might not look like the color, it's just this shiny reflection. This being drier really gives you the added benefit of where you have to apply it super heavy in places to even start to get that kind of dreadful wax bloom. So that's a big thing um, that, that's a problem. I mean, you can, there's things you can do to buff it and you know things like that that are just tedious and annoying and, and take up time and, and some of the solvent pencils and stuff. But, not to have to do that is a really nice thing, okay? To actually just be able to focus on your work and not not how it's, you know, blooming or making a mess or, or what have you. So, um, so yeah, you should enjoy them. They're they're a really nice pencil. All right, that color was oxide of chromium. Just so you know, I think there was a name and I had my hand on it. Mm -hmm. They're printed on well, they're printed on the different brands are printed in different places. I'm used to seeing them lower. On some, so and we use so many brands here. It's everyone's a little bit hard to remember. Okay, so this is Green Earth. So this is going to be a little browner. So I'm going to take this and kind of pull that green. I'm just trying to right now kind of find my form and start roughing in this kind of the design. All right, up here. Notice that there's this white area here. I really want to keep that because I, it's really hard to go back in with a white on a white over color when this doesn't have a lot of tooth like that other brand. So the, the my teeth. So I'm gonna go back and kind of erase out what, sorry, I forgot my colored pencil hockey. Okay, which one was I using the green earth? Okay, so I'm gonna kind of wait. In fact, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take that white and I'm gonna go ahead and leave myself a nice highlight there. So as I try to draw up in it, it'll start dragging. So I'll remind myself not to do much with it. The same with this down here, that little kind of blip of highlight. I'm going to go ahead and put that in. Now you can go back with like a gouache, white gouache or something like that. <laughs> Katie, Katie is like a geisha up here with a fan, a fan of, yeah, 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 just, just walk them over here. Cause that's it just, I looked up and holder. with reading glasses, I couldn't really see the, <laughs> she just had a, like Edward scissor hands, but it looked like a fan. Thank you, Katie. You're All right. All right, so back to my green earth. All right. Ileana Kreuth would like to know what color pencil how-to book you would recommend. Um, we talked about some of those in some of the other episodes. I don't have the list of them here, and I think I actually showed a few different books. Uh, I want to say the guy's name, his last name is Green, but I don't remember the, uh, his real name. What, 
go back and look at some of the other episodes that we've done with colored pencils. Um, what you're going to want to look for is somebody that's in the Colored Pencil Society of America because that's not where they just are like, so hey, you have a set of colored pencils, you're in. It's, it's actually people who have applied to be in, have been juried in. It's people who, who have some skills and some techniques and a lot of know-how to offer that are going to, you know, have books that with some kind of merit behind them. And a lot of times they use other people's artwork as well in the book um, to, to show different techniques and things like that. It's just not all theirs. But his name is something green, G-R-E-E-N. Okay, probably so, yes. Do we have a book on Jerry's of his? No, they know. Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah, just quick. Well. And Bonnie. Nice job, ladies. They're going to get the inaugural Tina Award. The Tina Vanderbrook Award of helpful viewers. All right. So see how we're kind of getting some of that shadow in there? It's it's very faint, but we don't, we're kind of right now just, it's better to not, to underdo it a little and not overdo because as we add other layers of color, stuff will pop pretty fast. This here is almost kind of, it's probably on the other side of the marble and it's kind of fading. So I'm just going to very lightly ghost in kind of right now I'm not using pencil lines I'm just kind of almost coloring in little tiny circles starving artist collective a states that your layering technique is beautiful and B would like to know how do these colored pencils spread and smooth out with odorless color or mineral spirits between layers um we are gonna try that with I think I don't know if the finesse is uh says non-toxic so um, that actually smells like um, alcohol base, like rubbing alcohol in taking it, for, for lack of a better term, huffing it with the cap off. So what it smells like just strong isopropyl alcohol. I, I, don't, I don't know because mineral spirits are something that helps break down oil base. Again, these are wax based. So it's something you would want to try um, first before you, on, on something that's a sample, because, you know, wax, having a wax-based blender already, like, okay, so, so here's this blue, I'm going to come in, I can make that a lot more intense, wow, a lot more intense, I purposefully did not blend this one just prior to the thing, because I wanted to be able to kind of see See how that's making that quite a bit bolder? <coughs> see how that really, you can really see this lighter, this blue really lit up right there. It was very dry before. Let me um, burnish right along here with this. Let me just get the tip's got a little bit of color on it. Is this okay to everybody that I'm jumping over here so you guys can see the blender? Mm -hmm. Is everybody good with that? See that, that shows a lot of that blue that was in there underneath with the other layers. I don't always like this paper layers nicely enough where I wouldn't probably necessarily want to burnish it normally with kind of the way that I work. Okay, I'm gonna go right into. Have you used alcohol with these colored pencils for blending? That's what we're gonna do with this. Uh, okay with this. I mean, okay, so let's do that here. With this side, we'll use this pencil and down in here, and then we'll try the blender with this side. How about that? So then people can see whether the wax, because the, the wax and the pressure with the clear wax is what kind of buffs this in. And I will say that I think with a little bit more texture, like at the My Teens, maybe this type of blender works a little tiny bit better. Okay, but can you see how that kind of helped that? All right, so let's do right here, because this is really dry looking, so let's take... Okay, see how that darkens that pretty well? That's a lot of layers of color, though. That probably has 
six to seven layers of different colors. And there's even some color here. So let's, can everybody see that? You can see that that blending stops right there. There's still some color, but I kind of stopped just to see what would happen. All right, so now this is the pen. I'm gonna go right here. And can you remind us what this pen is called? This is the Finesse Colored Pencil Blender Pen. It's formulated to work with wax-based pencils. Okay, so see how that oh, picks wow. it up? That makes it a little bit more almost like a, a watercolor. Let's see what happens with this. This should really light up. Okay, now so that makes that nice and dark, but what I don't like about it is it's not as subtle. You, this, you can kind of see the, the values through it. Let's see what this does for under here. You can feel it really pull the wax where it's heavier. YouTube viewer Renaissance Botticelli loves to see close-ups of when you're drawing, so he's really loving this. Awesome. Or she, I'm not really sure. Yeah, that's a that's a very uh, anybody kind of a handle. I love it. All right, so this really, especially with these dark colors, it looks like it really makes a difference. See up here, I went from here down with that wax. That I think makes it a little darker. Let's see. I'm gonna wipe this on just some paper to get kind of the darker stuff off. I don't want it to run through the red. Now this I didn't do with red. I did with some of kind of the oxide-based colors because it it was harder to see and it looked more like a natural. So see that really pops that. Then with in here, get that out of there. Let's see what it does with this where I've got some layers of really light. See that pulls those little, uh, the little kind of divots out that were the kind of little bubbles in the glass. So it's, it's just a different tool. You don't want to, with this kind of paper especially, you don't want to oversaturate this because that's, it, it, Kind of the beauty of the colored pencil to me is that drier line. I, I don't want my colored pencil to feel like a painting. That's me personally though. And sometimes this getting so smooth starts. Does like the paper feel wet after you? Is there no, because it's a very it's a very light marker, but it's it's wet and wet enough, you know? Yeah. But I can feel my paper buckling. That's what that was. Do you need to clean that tip when you switch colors? I would, they come in a pack of three. Mm -hmm. And what I do anytime I use anything like this is I keep like one for like reds and oranges and stuff like that or brown and browns. One for light colors like yellows and greens and then one for darkers. And and even maybe we get two packs of that just to, and, and mark them accordingly. Because the last thing you'd want to do is go to blend something that's like these really nice delicate yellows and greens and have just used it in like a dioxide violet or something and drag it through you know rob on youtube wants me to tell you that your marbles and just you in general are awesome <laughs> thank you rob <laughs> i appreciate that all right so does the blending make sense now let's zoom back out just a little and we'll go back to the big one and we'll see what we can get done in our Oh, one moment. Yes, yes. Cindy's wondering if one you can go back over that blender with pencil at this point. I would I would want to let it dry for a little while because it's still damp. Once it dries? Yeah, uh, once it's dry, but I th really do think that the paper is going <coughs> to change a little. Remind me towards the end and we'll give it a shot. Okay. And we'll see because this is, because Stonehenge is a printmaking paper, right? So it's not size like watercolor. So and and it's... Like Got a little bit of a felty texture, a little bit of tooth, right? So you would definitely want it to dry, dry, dry so that you're not um, potentially scratching and picking up that right. little bit of felty, feltiness. 
don't destroy the foot. In fact, I'm not even going to come right up along that side there because I know that that's... Now, when I'm doing this, you can see I'm really choking up on my pencil. I usually don't do that anywhere other than where I'm trying to really hard control a line. And I'll just draw just enough and make a couple little passes of correction with the color. It's not a good way to, to do loose, relaxed drawings, but what it is is it gives you a little bit of control over something that's hard. Notice up here, I'm not doing anything with that. This is, this is not a hard line like this is here. This has got a nice hard line, right? So it's okay to put that darker around there. You don't wanna do that in here. Here's different because that shadow comes right up to that edge. Okay, that's the, the first thing that'll make something look really cartoony is if you've got a hard edge when the color, you know, the values aren't that darkness, that hard edge. How will, or will it at all, how will that blender pen pencil affect the archivalness of the paper? The, the, this style blender pen should not affect the archivalness of the paper because it's an isopropyl alcohol, so it's evaporating completely. What, when, when you're using mineral spirits or you're using something with the oil-based, you're putting something that's potentially acidic and can eat kind of into something over time on a paper that's not been primed like gesso, right, to protect the substrate. So that's always a really good thought for how do I want to do this, you know. And if you know you want to work on a pencil and you want to smooth it out, that may be something before, if before you buy that you might want to consider. I'm going to want to smooth it. I'm going to probably need to use, you know, some sort of, uh, of something, you know, whether it's some isopropyl alcohol in a brush or a brush marker like this or something like that. So what's going to be something <coughs> that's going to keep my work archival as long as possible, right? Because the one kind of bad thing about colored pencils, even the most high quality, you know, $5 a pencil, like a couple brands I can think of off the top of my head that I love, but man, that kills me my pocketbook, replacing them at $5 a pencil. Both are fast. Yeah. Yes. Is that not all colors are, are going to be light fast, right? With colored pencils, because just the oil or the wax base can't protect all pigments that get ground down fine enough to be able to be in a pencil. So, there's other things that you're going to need to do to kind of help make it as archival as possible. So just, you know, framing with UV glass, um, you know, not, not doing this and mounting it on a board and, and displaying it with no protection at all, like a mat and, you know, a frame and even regular glass is going to help some, right? Just being smart about your materials. Okay, what do people, as, as I'm kind of working on this, what do they want to see me work on? Because we're going to run out of time for some of this. But do we want to start working on some of these colored lines in here uh, to see how those start coming out? Do they want me to deepen the shadows? What things are going to help them with kind of their interests on how they want this to be? I know it's going to take a minute to catch up, so I'll just kind of work on some stuff and then we can, can decide from there. This is a lizard and crimson. I like this color. Notice I'm going kind of in above that shadow there, or up, excuse me, the highlight. I'm going to kind of carefully color around it really light. Um, Barb says that she's read that her colored pencils need to constantly be super sharp. She sees that yours aren't, and she's wondering if that's the fact that you're using that kind or what the deal is with that. And it, she says, is constantly sharpening wasteful? Um, no, not really, because if it's still already 
pretty, I mean, these are still pretty, I mean, those are the most worn down ones I've got. Now this, the blender, you need it to be worn down some to have kind of a flat edge, right? To catch a lot, unless you're doing a very sharp edge there, you want it to be flat on a side to kind of be able to, to blend as much as possible at one time, right? Sometimes I'll have those down to a, an angled kind of flat stump. These are still relatively sharpened for, for what I'm doing. It, now, if I was going back in and edging something, I would have it super sharp. This still has so much of a sharp point to it. There's a pokey part. So this is still considered relatively sharp for colored pencils. Once they get much beyond this though, I'm usually on it. Um, and and I probably would be, if, if this was me at home, I probably would be more on it, Barb. Um, but it's every time I stop to sharpen something, it's gonna take time away from the demo. So unless they get bad enough where I feel like it's gonna, you know, it really needs to be done because I'm losing something, I would jump back in and sharpen it. Does it kind of depend on what you're working on as well? It depends very much on yeah. what I'm working on. Also, we've gotten several votes for color and shadow. Okay, which so so right back to square one of which one do we do? I have gotten no votes. Well, we've not, gotten more color none. than shadow. Okay, well we'll try to we'll try to um, work on both here. Okay, so this is the other thing is you know you can take your your see this is a little redder than what I'm doing. So that blends this nice, but I'm gonna have to go deeper on that. So, um, you know, you can take this up and that looks pretty good compared to that, right? You almost lose the point in that color. It's so similar. So I'm gonna come in. And the only thing that's kind of a pain in the butt with these is because they're dry when your pencil's really sharp, you will get some little crumbs of color until you start really kind of um, mashing that tip down slightly. But that's not a... Most colored pencils will have that little bit of crumb that are wax-based anyway. Okay, I'm going to go up an edge along here because there's like a kind of this is parts not hard edged because you're seeing through like some glass with some texture. So I'm gonna kinda give it a rough scribble along there. Can you describe how you get to your values? Um, Rob actually is saying that he always struggles with not going dark enough. Um, when is enough enough? Okay, so with w that's a good question, Rob, actually. Um, with this kind of thing, you can always use artistic license. This marble looks perfectly marble-like. Does it look exactly like this marble? No. The values are much lighter on this versus this. Can I make this darker and use darker values? Yes. But I kind of like this. If I was doing this whole thing and wanted to leave this nice kind of pristine white page behind it, it's helping... By, by not being the value that this is compared to this paper. I don't know if they can see the value change for me, but it's, it's, it's like at least a 15, 10 to 15% value change in person here in house. I don't know how the monitors or your screen at home picks it up. Um, and I don't really like how dark these are. This is, this is a lot of gray value in this picture. So, Artistic license says I can take this, I can change it, tweak it to how I want. If I wanted to make these colors different in the middle, I could. If I wanted to make the marbles darker and more green, like green glass, I could. So it's it's all in how you want to do it. Now where that that suspension of disbelief for a viewer is going to lie, Rob, not lie like tell you falsehoods, but B, right? is how your objects are gonna to relate to each other if there are multiple objects in a picture. You have to have the same dark values in all of them. You have to have the shadow values the same for them to believably, for the viewer, kind of exist in the same picture plane, if that makes any sense. But that's a, that's a good question. Now, if this, if this was like that toned paper, like I was saying, you know, 
if, if this was me and I was doing this, you know, home studio or whatever, I would have that mid-tone value paper like the Mytines to, to work with. I wouldn't probably be doing it on this because I'm a little bit of a value junkie. I like that value. I like pushing the really light lights and the really dark darks. And for me, it's easier to kind of pick and pull and twist them out of a mid-tone paper because it's already giving you your, on a white blank piece of paper, I'm creating my own mid-tone value. I'm, I'm ultimately the one that decides where the value is in the mid-tones, how, and then how light or how dark I'm going to kind of punch it believably from there. Darkening Artists Collective would like to know, being wax based, on a scale of <coughs> print color soft to Caran d'Ache firm, how do these pencils compare? Are they somewhere in between? Are they harder than Caran d'Ache? They're harder than Caran d'Ache. Than the, than the Caran d'Ache luminance, yes. Quite quite a bit harder. Um, they're not, but they're, in, in some ways, okay, so comparatively to Prismacolor, Prismacolor is super waxy. It's not soft. To me, it feels more sticky. Um, these, these feel very dry. Um, as you're sketching, you can do a lighter, drier sketch to it. It's when you really start pushing the pencil lead to the paper that you start getting that little bit of creamier um, application to it. But even on the... Let's find that page. It's, it's creamier on the that... Uh, and softer on that, my teeth being that harder texture. Sorry, I just like rubbed some of that in there to see what the difference is. Um, th this printmaking paper makes a dry pencil feel much drier. So um, it's, it's just, it's gonna depend on what paper you're used to working on, what brand you're already used to working with. Um, luminance I feel is soft, but it's not, as kind of, I don't know, squishy, waxy as Prismacolor. A technical term, again. There's lots of those. Are, are you making a list, Amanda? Because we need a list of no, I'm not. the Jerry's Live technical terms. Um, in terms of like the lead inside the pencil, mm -hmm. if you suspect that it's broken, is there anything you can do to come back from that? Or you just gotta deal with it? Okay, so that's a good, let's have a conversation about broken leads and pencils, okay? You, when, when you're shopping for colored pencils, whether it's student grade or otherwise, one of the biggest selling points to you, I mean, there's multiple things that should be important. If you're wanting this to be fine art materials, you want it to be light fast. Because if you're if you're going to be doing work where you're charging customers money for artwork, you want to make them as light fast as possible. Okay. Uh, the, the second thing, but in some cases the first thing, is you want a lead that's bonded to the sleeve, the wood sleeve. Okay. What that means is when they put that lead between the wood and sandwich the two pieces around it. Bonding means it's coated with a glue. When that wood is put around it and it's all put together, that casing is glued to the colored pencil. So if you drop the colored pencil, then you've got, you pick it up. Now from that, that's not gonna do anything. If I drop the whole tin, on a cement floor like maybe I might have done in here before multiple times. <coughs> it happens. Um, then even if the lead breaks in multiple points, you go to sharpen it, it's not gonna keep falling out and falling out and falling out. And I don't know if Prismacolor has changed that in the past, from in the past, but it used to be <laughs> you'd pick up the pencil and start coloring and it would loosen up just enough and a big, chunk would go like this would go falling out so then you sharpen it down to the thing and you start coloring and then another big chunk would fall out right that makes pencils absolutely useless when it's bonded it's those little pieces are still glued in there and the chances are good that you're not going to get it's very rare you're going to get a big it's not until the piece comes up to 
the tip where you know barely anything is holding it that you will have that fall out so that is a really good way to protect your investment in that the pencil is still going to be usable even if you've done an amy and dropped it on the concrete floor of a studio right katie yeah Jean Templemeyer would like to know if you if you have used Lyra colored pencils in the past and how these compare to those. I don't know if I've ever used the Lyra Professional. Um, I know that there's a lot of student grade ones that they have. I don't know if we've ever even carried if they do make a professional. Um, I don't think it's whether how the ones that I know of and that I've seen and used the issue was. I didn't think the light fastness ratings were really good on it. And that to me is a deal breaker. So I don't really look into something when it's just me looking for stuff personally. Again, because that's really important. I do a lot of commissions in color pencil. So um, I, I what I remember the ones I used, but again, I don't know what the grading was compared to these, whether it was professional or not. They seemed a little hard and it didn't seem like the leads were super big, which that's another thing that's really nice about these. That's a 3.8 millimeter lead, so it's a lot of lead um, in the wood barrel where some brands are not as large. Go back to, uh, which colored pencil episode was it that had the, I don't think I put what episode was what. Um, colored pencil 101, I think, was when we took all this, all the brands, Katie, right, and did an artwork with each brand. Mm -hmm. All the brands that we carried at the time um, that were touting themselves as artist or professional, uh, we we went over every brand we did anyway, but then we did small artworks with pretty much everything and give feedback on that. So that would be a good one to hit if there's different brands that you're kind of looking at, kind of comparing and contrasting between. Um, I do believe we had the artwork that had the that I did on the sanded paper because it's the VW bus, right? That Brian has in his office, I think. I can't remember. I think I want to say that I want to say he let us bring it in, but we were sworn to give it back. Um, so so you can see what this this Soho brand looks like on the sanded paper, but um, but. We so so we give feedback and and people did ask I think at that point uh, comparison and contrast of kind of what the different <coughs> the different ones were similar to so sorry I'm looking for a I mean, we've done some some other skills episodes where we've talked about how do you do uh, papery textures, how do you do more of a, um, like, textures of hair and fur and things like that. Um, People are asking kind of specifically how to get those uh, glossy reflections. Of the marble? Mm-hmm. It's, it's... We've only got about, like, 70 minutes left, though. It's, a, it's as much a trick of the eye... Okay, the only place on this one that I've done white is here and here. Everything else is is taking a color and going very lightly over it. Like this has a very, very thin, thin coat of this super light blue. It's cerulean blue, but it's actually pretty light if you go over it really careful in lines. You can kind of see where that's shaded in. It's, as I'm doing it, it's about this light. See how you can barely see that? I'm trying, I'm going back over, I'm pushing again. See how that just gives just a tiny little bit of tint? That makes the marble have some color to it and look like light is coming through it. It's not so much that I've put any highlight on it. It's just, I've gone, I don't think we, we used the solvent on here. I'll go ahead and. Ileana would like to know if you can combine wax and oil-based pencils in one piece. The, the biggest issue is going to be with combining wax and oil-based pencils is, is your, 
unless you're going to be really good about keeping tabs on where you have done what, the erasability of one is not the same as the erasability of another. If you want to blend your layers together, they don't work well together. Think about trying to paint with oil and acrylics mixed together. Okay. No, no. You might be able to do oil on the bottom and then kind of go back in with wax, but it's softer. The, the oil is, oil is a different way to suspend the pigment particles and it's a little more luminous and it tends to be a little bit less opaque, I think, unless it's a super heavy pigment load from a super incredibly expensive pencil. So it's, it's, unless you're doing it as just mixed media for fun, you're really going to have to, if you've got both practice with it and try it out, do some swatches of wax over oil, oil over wax, putting them together and trying to use some of the pencils. The, this blender just only works on wax base because it helps break down that kind of waxy coat so that the pigment goes together. So it, it's, it's not to say that it might not be possible, but it's just they've designed them for different purposes because of just different needs in the pencil. What wax doesn't give, oil gives and vice versa. Kind of, so um, you would definitely want to experiment with that and see kind of what what's for you. All right, does that make sense with kind of, just see how I've added color and what that color does is makes the highlight brighter. It's not about that I've necessarily put highlights in everywhere. Can you see where I just added that blue and a little bit of blue here? It makes this round out because it's lighter. This is just light blue, very carefully done over that, and then a little bit of kind of a mint done very lightly around it. And again, white's only been added here and only been added here for that same marble. Okay, if it was the textured paper where I could put lots and lots of layers and it was a mid-tone, I'd be able to go back over at the end with a white and probably make it stand out. But because it's... A bunch of color that's with a different style paper that doesn't attach as well it's harder to like I'm gonna show you let's say um, I'm gonna try to just put a little bit of white here so you can see that it's not gonna see how that more burnishes that color together and lightens it it's not letting me do and I'm pushing hard it's not letting me do a white white on top of it it's because of the paper texture because it's finally just hit, there's probably about five or six layers on here. And then with pressing that down, it's just mashing the pigment into that touch, like felty surface. Okay. All right, other questions while well, we kind of see if we can't get a little bit further onto this. Uh, they, people said the low lights on this. So let's see if we can pop a little low light in here. Uh, the shadows wax pencils and you run into a bloom like once you get to that point is there anything you can do to come back from that uh yeah you can uh take a really soft paper towel in, in a little bit and buff it sometimes um these pencil these these things will actually kind of eat the wax a little bit with that little bit of alcohol um i've seen even and, and it's, I don't know how well it works. I just saw somebody do it and it was like, oh, hey, that kind of looks like it worked. So we took a little piece of wax paper and kind of oh. buffed along it. But that's, again, something you want to practice on a, not a drawing that you're in the middle of that you need to have to a client in three days, you know? Um, so there's, there's different things that you can do. Now, the cheaper the wax pencil, the more that bloom is going to be. So, you know, take that into consideration, too. If you're always fighting wax bloom, you know, it, you may have a pencil that it's time to upgrade to, to something that's not going to give you that. I personally, in using these on different, on different surfaces, have never been able to get a wax bloom out of them. So they're just dry enough where it just doesn't happen. But again, those other shows are great resources for you. You can pull up the document for the show if you need to look to see which shows they are or just go to that um, document that's got all of the stuff listed and Off go to hand. Colored Pencil. JL26 
is the one where you compare a bunch of different brands. I believe and so. JL93 <clears throat> is the intro to colored pencils. Um, JL93 was probably, we started using it and talking about swatching and all that stuff, I would imagine. Three dollars and pop back here and them up. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think we did an after party where, for, for the colored pencils, mm -hmm. I do believe. On and Mikey, Mikey tried some and we talked about how to blend and layer and how to burnish and and all that. So besides that episode, there is an after party on the YouTube website. So, all right. Any last questions? Because it looks like we are out of time. Ladies and gents. Oh, we said that I would go back over this area that I put the solvent on and see if we can still draw on it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, let's see. I'm going to go into this with, let me get a darker value. Do, 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 do. Uh, let's get a dark blue. Oh, there's a dark green. I like that better. Sorry. Can't decide. All right. So this is kind of bluish now, so I'm going to go into it with a green. It attaches. The paper is just, feels different. Um, it's not as dry and the paper's dry. So, um, it's just, it's made the, uh, texture of the paper a little flatter. So, but it, it does work. Let's see up here where we used it, what it does. Now I can still get a pretty good line. It's not as, um, as soft on the paper. But yeah, it works. It's just waiting for that to dry completely, you know? And I wasn't really mushing the, the um, alcohol marker into the paper either. I was more taking it and kind of trying to pull across the, I mean, that works, that works pretty well. This part I pushed a lot harder with the marker and drug and it's, it's still attaching. I don't think I could do like six, seven, eight more layers, but it's definitely, now I will say because the paper fiber got pushed down a little, I can see the beginnings of a little bit of wax bloom from an angle, a little bit of shine, kind of right in here. You can't see it because the light's coming down, but I can see it at the angle that I'm at, so. All right, last questions. We good to go? No more questions, just everybody saying thank you for the awesome episode. Mm -hmm. uh, they're welcome. I have, I think, four different pictures of marbles that I was deciding on uh, for the show. There's this picture, and there are uh, three more pictures that are really cool. I loved this one, but it was way too blue. Look how pretty that is. Uh, you can see it right there. There's a more green one. That has some really nice dark values. Wow. Uh, and then there's also this with wood under it for those of you who really want to kick in the teeth. <laughs> so um, I will post these by noon tomorrow in the live group. And you guys that went in and did your charcoal drawings, I didn't hear complaining or moaning or cursing Amy out or anything in that. And we had a number of people that did them. And some people didn't have charcoal, but they did them in graphite. And that's absolutely okay. Because the point of it was with that immediate drawing, it was taking stuff that's around you and actually sitting down and doing some work. Even if you just have 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes on your hands, just getting your butt in there and, and you know, getting busy with smart supplies. So thank you guys for participating in that. That's very awesome. So, um, and eighth annual portrait contest, Katie, now through April 12th, people can apply online on the jerrysartorama.com website. Type in self-portrait as the keyword 
That'll take you to the page where you can learn about it, how to submit, uh, but you've got to get that in by April 12th. And just, I've had a couple questions. Voting has not begun yet. It will not begin until the entry period closes. We're done. It's, it's a labor of love and like five to 6,000 entries to go through when that starts. So it has to close before we can get that, get the voting starting. Cause otherwise that would not be fair. Okay. So, so not going to happen until that. And the winner's not announced until April or June 12th. So April to June, there's time to get all the jurors together and, and sift through everything and, and enjoy some people's artwork. So, so anyway, contemplate doing that. And you can even do it in colored pencil. Any artistic medium other than photography, no selfies on the camera are allowed. So, all right. Well, thanks guys. Next week. What is up next week? Top it's, ten, top ten oh things yeah. Pictures make. This is already going so fast. We're yes. already into February, We're which is February. terrifying. So, <laughs> The top 10 mistakes oil painters make, and I guarantee you, even among the most experienced of all of you, you are going to have made at least one of them, probably more. So tune in for that, and we will discuss those and how to not do that anymore and up your artistic oil painting game. So we will see you next week. Thanks for tuning in. Take care.